Hi, I'm John Robert Sutton. I travel the globe searching for unique foods that have been shared by generation of families, culture, and tradition. I will connect you to the stories behind well-sourced food and the people and places who make it happen. Welcome back to Truth in Food. My name is Swedish Eagle, and I'm just hungry. <laughs> so am I. We're going to talk today about your travels, and I guess you went to Cleveland, Ohio. What was that experience like, and why is the food scene in Cleveland, Ohio, so hot right now? You know, I just, going to Cleveland, I didn't know much. I didn't expect much. I really didn't read too much about it. Um, just my experience there was uh, fantastic. First of all, the weather was great. Second of all, you know, I really didn't know who Michael Simon was. I'm not a chef. I just supply ingredients. So to discover what he's done in that city to go to areas that were uh, crumbling and bring his expertise in food and his knowledge and quality to like the 4th Street area of uh, Cleveland was phenomenal. And he has a barbecue place um, there. And this barbecue place, Mabel's, was so good. Um, I just, you know, I'm not really a huge barbecue fan, but this was, was unbelievable. He also has another location in Las Vegas uh, at the... Um, the casinos out there, this, this area was run down. You know, Cleveland had enormous amounts. It was the lathe capital of the world. They had all of these large factories that made steel and they were dumping, polluting in the river. It was very famous in the sixties for the river to catch on fire because it was so polluted. So actually the river uh. was, was on fire They've cleaned that up so much. Uh, and you go down there and the waterways, there's birds, there's fish. Um, I rented one of those electric scooters and drove all the way down to the flats area and saw where all of these old factories were. And they've all been, you know, stopped for, for many, many years. And now it's all cleaned up. Restaurants have gone into these locations and have created unbelievable places to eat and really unique buildings to come and take a look at and eat inside. Oh, okay. And that's what Michael did. You know, it's interesting. If you just come to a major city like LA or New York, it's so expensive to rent. You know, your rents are twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars a month if you're lucky. Yeah. Um, the amount of labor because you gotta pay somebody a living wage in those cities. Right. So if you have quality food and you go to a place like Cleveland where it's just rebuilding and coming back, you're getting unbelievable deals on buildings that are, are abandoned, essentially. Right. And labor there is, is very reasonable because your rents aren't, you know, $4,000 a month there. The rents are very reasonable and you're living in a home. So the labor rates are low. So essentially what you're paying for for barbecue in LA and New York, you're paying for the same in Cleveland. So he's doing very, very well. And he's reinvesting back into the community with other restaurants oh, there okay. as well. So what makes this place so different? What makes this barbecue so unique? I, you know, I think the technique, I mean, everything is done on site. Um, everything is done there on that four street location. Um, the smokehouse is in the back. People are working there all night. Um, I got the fatty cut because I just want all that flavor. I, I don't know why someone doesn't get, you know, uh, brisket that doesn't have fat in there. I just don't understand that reasoning. It's uh -huh. kind of like decaf coffee. It's an oxymoron, right. you know, yeah. but people do it. And this thing came out and it was just... You know, totally unexpected. The crust was great. I, I think the way it was described to me and the bartender was so good at the explanation that it actually made the food taste better, which rarely happens. Yeah. And the way it was presented, you know, just great. You know, it wasn't on a plate. It was on a nice piece of wax paper. And the slaw was so delicious. Um, 
you know, they used a little bit of vinegar in there, so it wasn't just goopy mayonnaise type slaw. Right. Um, it was a uh, poppy seed slaw, and it just it just it just went with everything. I'm so cynical when it comes to places like that, and and I never heard about it. I just kind of walked in. I wanted barbecue. Um, actually, I wasn't supposed to go there. I was supposed to go to um, another place, but it was closed. So I, I walked there from the hotel. And then his wife, um, I didn't want to drink because the night before, and the, again, the bartender was telling me about this Pinot that his wife makes. And again, being around Napa and everything, I'm like, ah, oh, let me try it. And this Pinot was so good. Wow. I believe it was from, from, from Washington. But <clears throat> I just was totally blown away by this Pinot. I usually like um, coastal pinots here in California. Uh, Carlo and his brother Dante makes a uh, a pinot called Rain, oh, okay. which is just so good. Yeah, it sounds and, and Yeah, and so you know, Cleveland. I mean, they it's really a big sports town. They they have the Cleveland Browns there, a beautiful stadium there. Uh, there's enormous amounts of tourists coming there. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk about the, that on Sirius all the time. Yeah, that's a, once a year. It's the biggest thing, and they even have their own channel on Sirius XM. You can listen to Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Radio. Uh, one of the shows hosted by my good old friend Dusty Street. Wow. Remember her from K-Rock? Oh, yeah. yeah. She's she's there on that, huh? Yeah. Unbelievable. So anyway, back to the 4th Street area. Michael Simon has the great barbecue. What other type of restaurants are there? You know, he also has a fine dining place, a Lola, that's there next door. Um, there are uh, the, har the Hard Rock, um, not the Hard Rock Cafe, but the the... Oh, the ones that was on Sunset here. That, that oh, the Sunset Strip, like yeah, the Roxy, the whiskey. Yeah, it, it it's a place like that that's there. That's okay. um, uh, Garcia's does does very well. Um, you've got open bars that are there, so there's a lot of bar food places because people are there to watch the game. I mean, I was sitting at the bar at the barbecue place, and there was a, a, a gentleman and his son that drove all the way up from West Virginia to watch the Cleveland Browns game. So okay. just people love um, love going on around there. The, the House of Blues is what I'm thinking of. The House of Blues is on that street. Oh, okay. And so it's just, it's it's a street that they've just opened up and, and brought so much life to it. Uh, that I was really, really impressed. Um, okay. A lot of people eating outside, and um, that's that's in really the downtown area. And then you, about 20 minutes away by um, this electric scooter, I went to another area, the Tremont area, where there's uh, Sokoleski's uh, Deli. And this is an old Polish deli that just has Pilmeni, or, or that's Russian, the pierogies. That's what it is, the pierogies that they were making. Uh -huh. It was just so good. It was just, you just don't find food like that anymore. It's been there, you know, for for decades and decades and decades and haven't left. And that area is becoming more and more hip. Um, there's a, a old bar in this really old building that was redone uh, called the Spotted Owl that, uh, was just you go in there and you're you you just you're in something that's over a hundred years old, and just the ambiance of that and how someone used their creativity and opened up a bar in there and there's old stained glass windows and brick and wood and just this great bar and really nice people there in Cleveland. I'm I'm amazed how how that's cleaned up so much. Right. So like, what would you say that some of the foods are that Cleveland is known for? You know, Cleveland is definitely known for corned beef. And there's a place that um, Slimans has the best corned beef sandwiches in the country. A okay. Huge, giant corned beef. So they're, they're really known for that. And that's where Cleveland has an enormous amount of Irish heritage. Oh, okay. So a lot of Irish and Polish came from different parts of the world and uh, these uh, Polish food, the um, pierogies that 
are there are, are very well known and delicious. Okay. And also bratwurst. Okay. So um, I had uh, I had bratwurst at Mabel's. I first had the brisket and it was so good. And I'm like, okay, you know, let me get the bratwurst. Right. And and it was <laughs> the best sausage, the best bratwurst I've had in the U.S. No question about it. Okay. The casings were great, and they they have this huge market called the West Side Market. And it's it's a food market. It's a huge food stall. It's very, very old. And you go in there and there's these, all these original families have these stalls around and they're selling fish in there. They're selling a lots of pork products, a lot of sausage. And there's a very famous place in there that that Steve, he's Greek, and there's a hero place on the corner that just has this massive line. This guy's got this little stall, and he's just cranking out heroes until he closes or until he runs out. Okay. And when I was there, it, he had run out. I mean, there was nothing left. <laughs> wow, okay. So popular it, item. It must be really popular, but I wouldn't think having a Greek hero in Cleveland would be something on the map, but I would have tried it. Right. But you really see the care in in the food items. I mean, there was this Irish stall, these young ladies of um, heritage from Ireland, and they had soda bread there. Mm -hmm. Irish soda bread. And it's a little alkaline, but it has this addicting taste. I've always liked soda bread with butter. If you don't have butter on soda bread, then, you know, throw what, it out. What is soda bread? You know, it's it's an Irish bread uh, made with with wheat and soda, you know, soda powder in there that they stir together and has just a really alkaline, you know, soda type taste in mm -hmm. the bread. And I don't know, I you know, I wonder kind of the origins of the, how that happened, but um you know, I my my grandmother's Irish, so I kind of had that growing up, corned see, beef and okay. soda bread, and she used to make it. And and to see it, you know, you just you're not going to go to L.A. and see it in a market here. Right. So that was really neat. And the, you know, when you look at the the heritage that that comes to Cleveland, one of the fascinating stories is they have these old bridges there. These mm -hmm. really you know, from the 20s and 30s that steel and and huge cut cut uh, sculptures out of the side of these these bridges. And one of the bridges has a giant sculpted man where somebody had to come and cut that with their tools. And when they were building the bridge, they asked they they asked for people, stonemasons to come out. And this guy from England got the job and he brought his whole family from England to Cleveland to cut and work on this bridge. And that was Bob Hope's father. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah, that's how Bob Hope came to America because wow. his dad got a job cutting this statue on a bridge that they renamed the Hope Bridge. Oh, okay. Not oh, that's so incredible. long ago. So that bridge is named the Hope Bridge after his father was the one of the ones, the yeah, stonemasons yeah, yeah. who cut that. Yeah, see, the benefits of bringing in people from all over the world to America, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. If, if, if somebody wanted to keep those people out, we wouldn't have had a Bob Hope. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. We, we wouldn't have had Santana. It goes on and on and on. <laughs> so I heard that Cleveland is one of the top 10 food cities in America. What do you think makes it that? I just think of, uh, of this culture, uh, the the Irish, the Hungarian, the German culture that came in and worked in those steel mines. And, you know, they, they have these patsies. Uh, what a patsy is, is it's a, it's a dough filled uh, item with little edges on the bottoms. Um, so it's clamped down and there's edges on the bottom that you can hold and eat it. Why those crimped edges are there is because, remember, these people were working in the steel mills. Their hands were dirty. Right. So they could hold on to those edges and eat everything else and not what was in their hands. Okay. And they were very strong. So uh, sausages that you could put in your pocket and bring to work, wrap up, and, you know, remember a lot of people would eat these things at their lunchtime at the factories and stuff. Right, okay. And so people brought all those traits to Cleveland. Right. And 
Cleveland or where the, uh, mo- a lot of the railroads from the east and the canals all join together. Uh, and that's where Rockefeller, why he built Standard Oil, the headquarters was in Cleveland. The largest refinery in the world was Standard Oil Refinery Number 1. Okay. Because all the railroads would bring the oil from Pennsylvania, from West Virginia, from the Ohio Valley, all the first original oil wells, he brought all of that through the railroads to Cleveland to, to make the oil. And the same thing with the food companies. So all the food companies would bring the raw ingredients, the wheat, the hogs, the everything for bread, for oh, pork, for, for meat would all come. And there was a lot of packing houses there as well. Oh, okay. And so from there... The oil was refined and the gasoline went out and the, the steel then was put on rail transportation. And so was a lot of the processed food companies from there as well. Okay. So are there um, any other food traditions like, uh, you know, do people like uh, Asian food? Do people like Mexican food? Do people like uh, Scandinavian food? You know, there's a, a, a lot of those there, but I really saw more of the just kind of the meat and potato type food. Okay. Um, there's, you know, the there's a famous place there, the Bourbon Street Barrel Room, which again is in that Tremont area. And they just have your, your bratwursts, your meats, and, you know, your uh, dip sandwiches and things like that, plus just good old bourbon good old you know whiskey and it's okay. a it's a drinking town i mean it is a drinking town you i you go there's so many bars and restaurants the bars are filled the original beer company some of the beer companies are there the craft beers up in the near the west side market up in that area oh, okay and you just see people it's a huge sports town people wearing their jerseys uh, Cleveland was playing um, that Sunday, and I was there the Saturday. So you just, it's a big sports town. And a lot of people, you know, you see a lot of people driving Harleys, but it's not the younger generation. Okay. You know, you see the older guys out there um, driving their Harleys around, um, having fun. It looks like they don't have a helmet law there, which, you know, is probably... Not Maybe the not best idea, idea, but people are driving around without helmets, and um, it's a uh, it's a town that again it's so sports oriented. I mean, so many people where you go in, and, and so many bars have four and five televisions of of every game imaginable on college, you know, from Ohio State and Notre Dame and everything, and people so, are so- drinking. So what would be some of the most popular foods in those places? You know, just a good old bratwurst, you know, not a hot dog. It's just a good old bratwurst sandwich. Okay. A corned beef sandwich, you see. Okay. A lot. You know, just your regular um, uh, hamburgers, hot dogs, your just good old, good old bar food. What about vegetarian food, vegan food? Not so much, maybe. No, I... I you know, there are vegan choices, but I just, it's the type of thing where I think you mentioned still you're a vegan there and you're going to kind of keep that in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> keep you that know? to yourself. Huh? You're going to keep it to yourself. I don't think it's uh, something to be so proud of right. over in that part, you know, where, where, where meat and potatoes are all over. But it's a good meat. Like, the casings are all natural. Like you, in front of your eye, you're watching them grind down the pork and grind down the meat and use the spices in the sausage. So it's all right in front of your eye. There, there's really nothing to hide because it's so competitive that if you have a bad product, you're not going to survive in Cleveland. Right. You know, um, there's just so many choices of new restaurants that have opened up, sandwich shops, your old traditional go-to places, your local pubs, that if you're going to open up something new, it better be good or you're just not going to survive there. What makes a good corned beef sandwich? Like if you get down to the details, what, you know, what kind of bread? Do you have mayo? Do you have pickles? Uh, what, you know, what makes the one beef better than another? You know, it it's about 
the quality of the meat and it's boiled, you know, so it's boiled and steamed. And it, some people are, uh, and, and a good, the bread, mostly it's the rye bread that's on there. And if you have traditionalists just want the corned beef on rye bread and there's enough juice and, and spice in that corned beef to make that sandwich good. Then it can go into overdrive where you've got mustard and mayonnaise and filled with sauerkraut on there and a toasted bun. And you can just go into overdrive and some people like that. Um, I just like the good old, if, if the corned beef is good and not tough, so much of it is tough where it's just like chewing on a tire. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the rye bread's no good. Um, you know, to this day in L.A., to me, I, I, I still like Nate and Al's. Whenever I'm in Beverly Hills, I still get a loaf of their rye bread and have them slice it thin right. there. To me, that's just incredible where there's that, that when you chew through it, that the crust has to be tough, yeah. you know, but tasty. The and then the inside soft. soft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just nail that. But that's bread made that day. I mean, yeah. you know. If you use preservatives, that bread will last, you know, a week or two. Right. And you just don't want that. So there they've got they've got the corned beef sandwich down. Again, Irish immigrants, Irish traditions. And um, that's uh, Slimans is the, the, the famous corned beef sandwich in Cleveland. If you, you know... If you go to Cleveland and you don't get corned beef there, it's like going to Rome and not going to the Vatican. Okay. You know, it's just so, when in so, Rome, so, have a corned beef and slides. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what kind of history do they have? You know, I you know what, it's interesting. I I didn't really get into it. Um I just didn't have too much time and I know it's been there for you know, many, many decades and years. And a lot of these places, I don't really, if it's good and someone tells me and I go and eat, it, it's really what I like to do. Came I, highly recommended. Yeah, it came recommended. I didn't, it's a good thing to go back and really look at what they were. I think in Cleveland, I was just amazed how beautiful this city was. Yeah. I was amazed. I think even Clevelanders don't understand what they have. I mean, I felt some of them were almost apologetic. In fact, <laughs> when I was sitting at the bar and talking to these guys from West Virginia, uh, they asked me where I'm from, and I said I was California. And the first thing they said is, "God, did you take a wrong turn or something?" <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, you know, so there was almost a little bit of an apologetic to, that I was there. Not so. I I was I love those newly rebuilt old factory buildings. And I love how they redid the river areas, the flats. It's an old Irish town. And you could tell because you go down there and you see a memorial for the Irish famine that's there. Oh, okay. In the middle of nowhere. So they have a memorial for you know, all the people that died right. and were starving and, and had to get out of Ireland and come to America. And, you know, they were starving. They had nothing. There was nowhere to go. And the mothers and the fathers, heart wrenching stories, putting them on boats and coming to America sounds familiar, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. And so, you, you know, you look at what they built and you look at what these new generations are building and, you know, that's what makes America great. Yeah. And those food traditions coming in are, are the Irish food traditions, corned beef and cabbage and soda bread and all these unique Irish food items that are just so delicious. And, you know, again, here you are with, with I think a lot of people weren't, because since I'm not from Cleveland, I was going in areas that I just loved and enjoyed, but maybe the old timers, well, my God, why are you going there? Because that was such a bad area at one time. Oh, I see. It's almost like I have a little prejudice to downtown LA because I remember it was so bad. Right. So I'm like, oh, I'll be, but now I come down to down, it's fantastic. Yeah, everywhere. And I have to kind of always cross my mind going, no, it's not bad, it's a good place to go. Yeah. So that's exactly what I saw with Cleveland. And I see, 
I see so much opportunity because if you're smart and you have a good restaurant concept, people have money in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a it's it's not destitute. There's the the city to me is coming back. Real estate values are going up. It's actually a beautiful town. Great sports. Nice people. Well educated. The Cleveland Clinic is there, which is some of the best doctors and hospitals in the world. And to go there and have a restaurant concept or a market or a coffee shop and open it there, you know, if your rent is $3,000 as opposed to $30,000 and you're essentially charging the same prices for your food, yeah. you're going to do well there. Yeah. And you just start thinking of all of these towns that people call the Rust Belt and, you know, from Toledo to Cleveland to Detroit, they're slowly coming back. You're yeah. hearing a lot of millennials and the younger generation where it's just it's too expensive in new york and la for a lot of these millennials right. so you can go to cleveland raise a great family have a lot of money in your pocket you know it's like when i travel in different parts of the world i run into more people traveling from cleveland and and <laughs> you know these the midwest countries than i even do from people from la and new york because they got more money in their pocket do you know why they put the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland? I do not. Yes, you do. You told me the story. <laughs> no, they do. The um, The Rock and Roll was a DJ in the 1950s came up with the saying Rock and Roll. Okay. So, And it was because of the African rhythms, African-American rhythms at the time, we're, be, we're changing and, and coming out of the blues and becoming, you know, more upbeat. And that's when he said, hey, let's rock and roll. So the, the rock and roll was discovered the, in Cleveland, in Cleveland Ohio. Ohio. So that's where they decided to put the museum there. And that, boy, that museum is something else. It really, really is well curated and it takes you back from the beginnings of music with uh, Johnson, the African-American famous guy yeah. playing the guitar all the way up to today. Yeah. I believe uh, this year, Roxy Music, and if I'm not mistaken, The Cure, were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Rick Ocasek, he, he, the cars, they were inducted last year. Right. And um, he passed on, but he spent some time in Cleveland himself personally. Oh, okay. You know, there's a great music career out of Cleveland. Yeah. For a lot of people. Food and music, great place to visit. And, the, and tons of bars. And tons of bars and the Cleveland Browns and all the other sports teams running okay. around. So, do you have a favorite place to stay? You know, I um, I just ended up in one of the Bonvoy programs. They have so many hotels, the from the W to the Sheraton to the Marriott. They have so many different brands that I pretty loyal to them. Okay, because I know, you know, I know what's going to be there. Yeah. I, I know the bed is going to be. The, I'm always going to have high speed internet. And so normally I stay there, but there's a ton of great, unique hotels that have opened up in the Tremont area, in uh, uh, downtown Cleveland. Very nice hotels. Okay. Sounds like the place to visit. Thank you very much, John, for educating us on Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, it was great. And I, I, I can't wait to go back. Cleveland was great. So, yeah, you know, thank you for joining me today on Truth and Food. I'm your host, John Robert Sutton. This program is produced by Swedish Eagle and Crew at Groove Radio Studios in downtown Los Angeles. For more information about this program, please visit my website at suttonselects.com and follow me on social media at Sutton Selects. And if you like this episode, please subscribe, rate, and review. I really appreciate your feedback and see you next week.